Okay, we're here at one of our sugar apple trees and it's loaded with flowers. So it's a great time for her to show everyone how to hand pollinate anonas. Anona flowers, when they first open, are female. Here's a female stage sugar apple flower. See how the three petals, like a three-legged stool, are just narrowly open. And then, usually a day later, the petals open more, and when you look up inside, you can see pollen. And then, several days later, before the petals fall off, it looks like this. If no pollination has occurred, not only will those brown petals fall off, but the whole uh, flower stem will fall off. Now, usually in nature, and in most people's yards, you do not need to hand pollinate sugar apples because tiny little beetles uh, do the work. However, those beetles do need to have something to eat or they're not going to stay around. In those yards and neighborhoods where people pick up every last fallen fruit and keep the yard very neat, there will be none of these beetles present. You have to have some spoiling fruit uh, somewhere on the ground in your yard or in a container in your yard so that the beetles year-round have something to eat so that they will multiply and be present when your sugar apple and other anonas flower. If your neighborhood is very neat or if you have a variety that doesn't have the aroma and the flower that attracts the beetles, uh, then you need to hand pollinate. With some anonas also, it is very beneficial to hand pollinate to get larger fruits. The biggest difference is with soursops. Soursops that are pollinated by beetles will have small curved fruit and if you do a good job of hand pollinating, you can have fruit over a foot long and symmetrical, cylindrical in shape. Now, to, to hand pollinate sugar apples or atemoyas, which are half sugar apple and half cherry moya, uh, what works very nicely is a horsehair watercolor brush of one of the smaller sizes, preferably this small. If you use the stiff nylon haired brushes, those will actually injure the flower. Now this is a diabetic strip container. Any small pill jar or old-fashioned uh, film canister will work. So you stick your container under the flower and you, the male stage flower, and you reach up in there and flick the stamens and the pollen down into the film jar or the small bottle, whatever. Okay, now here's a female stage flower. It's actually in a terrible position. We don't really want a fruit way out there. But since I have it here to show, we'll do the procedure. I want to get some sticky substance from the flower on the brush. Otherwise, the pollen does not stick to the brush. Now that the brush should be a little bit sticky. Can you see the stamens and uh, pollen with the stamens on the brush?
and I do it more than once. The more pollen we get up in there, the more seeds there will be, which means a larger fruit and more flavor because the seeds influence the flavor of the fruit. There are somewhere between 80 and 120 female parts and one wants to get some pollen on as many of those as one can. The female parts are in a central cone-shaped area of the flower and the female stage flower uh, which I'll try to open up here so you can see I don't know if if the camera will show it that close yeah, you can see it okay the central cone shaped area is a mass of female stigmas since it's in a bad spot for a fruit I'll just sacrifice it So the male area is the brighter white uh, donut around the cone. When the female parts are interested in sex, the male parts aren't. By the next day, the female parts will be dried over, not receptive, and then the male parts, the, the stamens, uh, will produce the pollen and we we do have we do have fruit here see this very baby fruit and uh, fruit well along to formation we have not been hand pollinating this tree because there are plenty of beetles present the beetles that I'm talking about are only a couple of millimeters long. And the main type is called nitidulid. Nitidulid. You can look that up online and find plenty of good information about anona pollination by nitidulid beetles. We were lucky to find pollen here around 9 in the morning because it is a pleasant, cool, cloudy morning. Most sunny mornings the pollen would already be gone. Sugar apple pollen on some varieties is best found before sunrise and on other varieties within an hour after sunrise. If you want to save pollen to use another day, you want to put in desiccant flakes or desiccant packets inside your container before you put it in the crisper in the refrigerator. Without desiccant material, drying material, the pollen will usually be completely covered with mold by the following day. It will not be good. With desiccant, the pollen can keep for over a week. <laughs>